Welcome back to First Move. To hit Paris climate goals, the International Energy Agency says investment in renewable energy must rise from $1 trillion a year to $4 trillion by 2030. But with that ramp up comes the risk of a concentration in supply chains with increasing reliance on nations like China, Chile, Argentina and Bolivia for essential minerals and metals. Just remember these resources are needed to produce everyday items like catalytic converters, lithium ion batteries used in electric cars and computer chips. But instead of looking elsewhere underground, what if we looked up at asteroids and the materials they might contain? Of all the mining startups, Astroforge is forging ahead with its first launch next month. It's hitching a ride on a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket to test whether its refining process can work in space. Here to explain, Matt Garlich is Astroforge's CEO and co-founder. Matt, I was so excited when I heard about your company, but now you really have to explain. What made you go, I know we need more of these mineral resources and metal resources. Let's look at asteroids. Yeah, I mean, we know we're running out of these resources on our planet. Mm. And we also know a lot about asteroids. They hit our Earth every day. We call them meteorites. Um, and we can go out and study them and look at what kind of metals are available on them and what their concentrations are. And uh, we went and did that. And what we found is that certain elements on our periodic table are in much higher concentrations than anything we have on Earth uh, of these specific metals. Specifically, we're going after the platinum group metals to start with. Um, because that's what we've identified as one of these resources that is wildly abundant in space. How much higher in terms of concentration, just to give us a sense? Yeah, we have some asteroids that we've identified that have up to 10,000 times the percent of platinum wow. group metals on them than the ore deposits on Earth. So in some cases, extremely high. Okay, but this is where it gets complicated because you're talking about mining for these um, platinum-based metals in space, zero gravity, we're talking about, and refining them. We've got pictures of this. Explain how this works. Yeah, so this is a refinery, you know, and we're sending this up in about 10 days on Transporter 7, SpaceX rocket that's going to low Earth orbit, and we're going to demonstrate that this device can take as input, essentially, a metallic asteroid, and it will produce platinum from that asteroid. And that's what we're going to demonstrate in about 10 days. So you're going to show both the mining and the refinery operations because i believe this is mining i'm showing an image on the screen now but also the refinery process so basically what you're going to try and illustrate and show investors i'm sure too is that this can be done in space yeah absolutely we need to prove that we can essentially refine platinum from what we believe to be an asteroid in the zero g environment of space nobody's ever done it before um, we've obviously tested this, and the picture you're looking at is in our test facility here on Earth, which can get very close to what we expect to see in space, uh, but we need to prove that we can do it in space. Just compare the cost today of, if you can, of traditional mining, and I know it's difficult to quantify some of the softer issues like the socio-economic impact and the, the sort of climate-related cost of traditional mining, but if you add in the cost of the space launch and the kind of processes that we're talking about here, can you give me any sense? Yeah, I mean, traditional mining on average, if you were to go start an open pit platinum mine today, you're talking about half a billion dollars in capital expenditures needed to start that mining process um, to go through those ore and then to mine everything. It ends up being about $975 an ounce for platinum. We believe we can get that price down to about $50 an ounce for platinum. And again, you know, our startup costs there are still going to be substantial, but we're going to ore, ore qualities um, that are so much higher than what we have on Earth. It allows us to drive that number down. I mean, that's a dramatic cost. Is this only possible? I mean, there are all sorts of complications. and There will be people looking at this going, what the heck even now? But because of the collapsing cost of launches, of actually getting into lower space orbit and beyond. Oh, 100%. This is driven yeah. by the advancement we've seen in space, specifically with the new space economy. I mean, SpaceX really led this wave with the lowering of launch costs and the access to space. And now we're seeing the second wave of uh, you know lunar missions becoming available. And actually for our second mission in October, we are launching on one of those rockets that is going to go to the moon. Uh, and we will actually leave from the moon. And what that does for us, it gives us a whole bunch of energy that allows us to escape Earth's gravity well without building a giant craft. So we can build fairly small space vehicles, uh, which means they're much cheaper, that can go out to these asteroids. 
And how do you get to the to the meteorite as well? Because I, I feel like even just that part of the equation here is um, is sort of eluding me. And and what's the hit rate? I mean, not surely not every uh, meteorite is going to have the kind of elements that you're looking for, or the ore at least that you're looking for. No, absolutely not. I mean, we started out with a list of over 1.1 million asteroids that we studied, and we whittled that list all the way down to about 31 target asteroids that we believe have these high concentrations of platinum group metals, and uh, we track them daily, right? So we track our trajectories, essentially the planning of leaving Earth to the asteroid, every single day to understand how much fuel it would cost to get there. Um, and that's how we do it. How far away are we from actually seeing this used on a regular basis, Matt, if you, if you had to guess. And I know it comes down to financing, success rate, proving that you can do this in, in space. How far away do you think we are in terms of years? And don't go Elon yeah, space on is me a risky give me wild. And... <laughs> <laughs> space is a risky business and you have a lot of failures out there and we're going to experience some of those, um, um, I'm sure. You know, but our plan right now shows us launching our first mining mission at the end of 2025. Uh, we plan on bringing this back by the end of the decade. Wow. Okay, um, and what about money? Do you need to raise more money? How much uh, or how far can uh, the money that you have today get you? Money that we have today can get us through our first two milestones, right? Which is that refinery demonstration yeah. we're launching in a couple of days. And then also that deep space mission that's going to go out to the asteroid. Um, that's a huge mission for us, right? That'll be the first time a private space company has ever gone out and operated in deep space uh, doing a mission. And so I'm super excited for that one to show the world that we can do it. Wow, it's very sci-fi. So fingers crossed for that, because that really is, to your point then, a real show me um, expedition, or at least two of them. Um, and then the conversations really begin with, the, with investors. Matt, keep us posted, please. Good luck.